Uh, it's only right that we start this match reaction by, yeah, by mourning the death of the Queen. The UK's longest serving monarch died in Balmoral today. 70 years she reigned for the 96 year old. And there will be mourning. There will be plenty of mourning going over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but it felt like a sombre mood going into Old Trafford for that game tonight. A bit of a strange mood. Uh, and it's a sombre mood now that the game is finished. Manchester United... We went into that game there tonight off the back of four consecutive wins in the Premier League that really buried our poor performances against Brighton and against Brentford. And tonight was where Eric Ten Hag needed to find out whether he could trust his squad, whether he could make wholesale changes. And he did make wholesale changes to that team. He needed to find out whether he could trust those players to come in and put in the same sort of level of performance that that first team's been doing in the Premier League. And he found out they could not. That was horribly exposed. Martinez played 45 minutes tonight and was Manchester United's man of the match. Of course, we could talk all night and we should really talk about how horrendous this decision was to give a penalty. The ball clearly hitting Martinez's leg before it flies up and hits his arm. It, it was just wrong. It wasn't controversial. It, wasn't, it was just, just plain and utter wrong that that penalty was given. But it does not take away from the utterly abysmal performance from Manchester United. It was when Martinez came on at half-time and how he played. He just exposed the rest of them for the passengers they were in that game. From Casemiro and Fred to uh, Ronaldo, every, pretty much every single one of them. I thought Ericsson was decent enough in the first half, seemingly the only person who could actually string a pass together. I uh, thought Mal Malicia was was okay, but I mean, I'm clutching at straws here. Eric Ten Hag is going to go away from that game absolutely furious because he needed to know whether he could trust his squad or not. I said it going into the game. I, I wanted Ronaldo to put in a, a cracking performance. It's a shame that was offside, scoring with his face. Cracking header, he was offside. I don't think Ronaldo of old would have been a yard or two offside there. We think he would have made that darting run better. But I, look, Anthony Langa, if I'm trying to get a bright spark, not, it's not even a bright spark. He was okay in the first half, seen better off the left. Creating some opportunities, but every cutback was leading to absolutely nothing. And I tell you what, tonight, Fred playing in that number 10 role, we talk about invisible performances. Fred was absolutely atrocious tonight. Atrocious. I'm not sure there was one pass. I'm sure there was one pass that he got right, but it just seemed everything, every time he had a pass that could have created something, it led to nothing. Fred in the number 10 role. I mean, Fred is not known as the most uh, accurate of passes. That's not really his game. But to play him in that number 10 role felt a little bit strange. And then he put, but Ericsson, he wanted Ericsson to be deeper so he could be the playmaker from deep. I understood Ten Hag's logic. But at the same time, as I'm talking about how poor Fred was, I think Casemiro showed exactly why Scott McTominay is starting every single game for Manchester United right now. Scott McTominay was and has been fantastic for Man United in the last few games. And Casemiro there looked really, really off it. I mean, every single player looked really, really off it. But Casemiro, I was unpleasantly surprised by how off it he looked. And I suppose it's symptomatic of that entire second squad. As I said, this, this, this season for Ten Hag, he needs to know that he can trust everybody. We've got nine games in October and the performance levels have been so intense in these, la in these last few games. And Martinez... He embodied that when he came on in that second half. It's a joke. It gender, honestly, it's not a joke, actually. That's the wrong way to describe it. It's, it's not even controversial. It's like that's gone to VAR. They've looked at it, seen the ball hitting his leg, then his arm, and going, yep, that's a penalty. When I think to the letter of the law, that's not a penalty. That's not controversial. That's, I, I don't know what that is. It's either... Just an utterly crap referee or it's match fixing. And I don't, well, I'd like to think it's not, of course it's not match fixing, but that's just an outrageous decision. But yeah, what for me, what's more outrageous is the fact that Martinez played 45 minutes in that game and was our man, was our man of the match. He played like he has been playing in these last few games, throwing his body on the line, throwing himself into tackles, bringing the ball out from defence. He was even our best passer in that second half. Martinez was trying to do absolutely everything because everybody else was trying to do absolutely nothing. And I personally think the two biggest examples, sorry, 
biggest examples of that were Fred and Casemiro. Fred, Casemiro and Ronaldo. Ronaldo tonight, I wanted to see Ronaldo. I wanted to see what he could do in this team. And all I saw was a man that uh, I can't really throw too much shade at Ronaldo because everybody played crap. But he was just equally as invisible. He just seems a bit, he's got a yard short in his legs. Ronaldo, for me, he's going to have to be a good super sub for Manchester United this year. I just don't think he has, as a 37-year-old man who's played football at the highest level for nearly two decades, I don't think he has the legs to play the intensity of the football that Eric Ten Hag wants. It's why you're seeing players like Martinez, an athlete who's so used to the Ten Hag style that it's natural to him. Malasia, the player who's sort of like taking the Ten Hag's football like a duck to water. It just won't, for me, work out with, with Cristiano Ronaldo. I'd I love to be proven wrong. I don't think I will be proven wrong. I think over the course of the season, the best way to use Ronaldo is to s use him as a sub, right? I just don't think Ronaldo's got the fitness levels required to start games for Eric Ten Hag. I'm not making that judgment off the back of this one game, but it's just a bit more justification for the fact that I think that's correct. But I was really shockingly surprised by how poor Fred was. And how invisible Casemiro was. And that's exactly why Scott McTominay is starting every game. It's exactly why Scott McTominay will start in the next game for Manchester United. Now, we don't actually know whether that's going to be against Crystal Palace. Or even when it's going to be against Leeds. Because there's going to be postponements. The EFL games on Friday night have already postponed. That's confirmed. We're going to get confirmation in the morning whether the Premier League games are postponed this weekend. And I probably guess they're going to be. So Manchester United maybe not even going to play for in Leeds because that's in 10 days' time, which may well be when the state funeral for the Queen is. So we may not see Manchester United back in action for a good long time. And after, after the, as I said, the positivity that we had from four games in a row, to go into that and to see our squad playing like that, I'm angry. So I have no idea how angry Eric Ten Hag's going to be. But tonight was a test for all of them. Who started? Maguire started, Lindelof started, Casemiro went in there, Fred went in there, Anthony Langer went in there, Ronaldo went in there. Of course, you had some, some first-team players. You had Eriksen, you had Bruno who came on, you had Anthony who started. But he needed to learn whether he could trust them. He needed to know that if I take all these first-team players out and it, we've got a game, a game every three days, I need to know that I can trust these players to come in and I can trust these players to play that level of football that I can absolutely expect. And trust players like Martinez to deliver. And instead, they put in an absolutely oh, abysmal performance. It was like playing through. It was like football in treacle in the first half. For the majority of the game, really. We only had a couple of like gilt-edged chances. Ronaldo, there was a one, we had one chance we had within a minute of the second half starting. When Bruno fired in across and Ronaldo, come on, man. I was expecting him to do that. Glancing header just went wide. Just, we felt a bit desperate towards the end. We weren't really, it was... It was just, it was just shit. That's the only way I can describe that game. And as I said, it's, it's, it's the lesson that Eric Ten Hag didn't want to learn about this squad. What we saw yesterday felt like last season. Just a game where the, the atmosphere was muted. The, the performance was muted. The energy was, was not there. The fight non-existent. All the players were passengers. And we saw that again tonight. Fred... Probably the greatest example, but not the only individual example there tonight. You could talk about Fred, and I have. You could talk about Casemiro, and I have. I could talk about Maguire. I could talk about Lindelof. Don't think there's anything too much to talk about there, but it just, uh, it just, it, it feels, yeah, it, that's, that's the United team there. We don't have the, we, we've got the strength and the depth and the numbers in the squad, but do we have the strength and the depth and the mentality of the squad? No, we don't. No, we do not. We need Martinez starting every game at this particular moment in time to see those levels of performances. But you can let me know what you think about that game in the comments below. Of course, this was an absolute joke. A ridiculous, ridiculous decision. But the main takeaway from tonight is absolutely what you can see down there. The fact that Ten Hag has found out that he really, really cannot trust his squad.